It is recommended to use an appropriate surface positioning template to facilitate eventual mapping comparison between samples. Adjust the position of the camera and its focus in such a way that the sample's surface boundaries fit those of the surface positioning template. The positioning template can be deleted. Choose Add Boundary and click in the camera feed to define the boundary along the sample subsurface. And a closed contour will be created. If necessary, choose Delete Boundary and click in the camera feed at a boundary point along the sample subsurface and the closed contour will be reshaped consequently. Then choose Add Boundary to continue creating the boundary of the sample subsurface. It is important to edit or select a subsurface in the subsurface ID field before adding a boundary in order to assign the boundary to a subsurface. Choose Add Boundary and click in the camera feed to define the boundary along the appropriate subsurface. You can also choose Delete Boundary and click in the camera feed at a boundary point to correct any misshape of the subsurface boundary. This step is important for the interpolation of characterization values to the boundary to obtain a complete mapping of the sample surface. To add positions, choose Grid in view of the menu bar. We can select options for the snapping grid and it will be displayed in the camera feed. Select the appropriate subsurface ID before adding a position in order to assign the position to a subsurface. Then choose Add Positions and click in the camera feed to add positions at locations of interest on the sample subsurface. If necessary, Choose Delete Position in Edit of the menu bar and click in the camera feed at each position that is not overlaid on a location of interest. The position will then be deleted from the camera feed. Positions could be added one by one according to a snapping grid as shown previously or anywhere on the sample. Positions could also be imported through a previously created map file. In order to dimension the sample and calibrate its image, two reference marks need to be created on the sample surface as far as possible from each other, ideally not over regions of interest. Marks should be made at approximately the same surface height, ideally at the average horizontal mapping plane, since it is the top view image of the sample that is calibrated. Add reference indicators on the two reference marks previously created. Choose Reference 1, red, in Edit of the menu bar and click in the camera feed at the first reference mark. Choose Reference 2, blue, of the menu bar and click in the camera feed at the second reference mark. To create a blank map file, choose Create Map and a snapshot image of the camera feed will be saved as long as all positions, boundaries, and references displayed in the camera feed will be saved in the map file. Now, install the circle indenter under the load cell, secure it using the screw at the back. Using manual controls in Mac One Motion software, position the sample under the indenter. Now 
lower the spherical indenter, the z-axis, towards the surface. With the sample testing chamber mounted onto the Mach 1, move the stages in such a way that the center of the Mach 1's indenter is positioned just over the first reference mark. The coordinate system used in this method corresponds to the Mach 1 horizontal stages. Report the X and Y stage position in the calibration pop-up window of the Mapping Toolbox software. Don't forget to upload the vertical stage before moving on to the second reference mark. Repeat the same procedure for the second reference mark by moving the stages in such a way that the center of the Mach 1's indenter is positioned just over the mark. Report the X and Y stage position of the second mark in the calibration pop-up window of the Mapping Toolbox software. To create a dimensioning map file, choose Create Map and the metric coordinates of the two reference marks and those of each position of the grid will be saved. Position the spherical indenter at approximately 2 mm over the highest point of the sample surface. Set the Z position to 0 and fill the chamber with enough PBS solution to cover the highest point of the sample by at least 1 cm and allow a minimum of 15 minutes for equilibration. Import the X and Y coordinates of the position grid from the previously created file. Copy those position into the scan function. In the sequence repetition field, enter the number of grid position of the scan function. It is important to ensure that the indenter is positioned at 2 mm over the highest point of the sample before pressing execute. This step verifies that the indenter clears the sample surface everywhere in the XY scanning area. Failure to properly perform this verification might irreversibly damage the load cell. Create the following sequence for the automated indentation mapping. Add a zero load function followed by a scan function with the previously copied position coordinates, and then add a normal indentation function, where the normal indentation parameters are specific to each sample type. Don't forget to save the data from the normal indentation function. The automated indentation first measures the contact coordinates of the predefined position and the contact coordinates of the four surrounding positions. The surface orientation is then calculated using the measured coordinates. Finally, a perpendicular indentation is performed at the predefined position. Create the following sequence for the automated thickness mapping. Add a zero load, followed by a scan function with the same copied position coordinates. Ensure that the number of repetitions is equal to the number of positions. And then add a fine contact function where the parameters are specific to each sample type. Don't forget to save the data from the fine contact function.
finally add a move absolute function on the vertical axis in order to reposition the needle at 2 millimeter over the highest point of the surface. You do not need to save the data from the move absolute function. A needle is installed under the load cell and is vertically displaced towards the sample at a constant speed until a predefined maximum load is reached. The needle touches the cartilage surface when there is a slight increase in the load, while it touches the subchondral bone when there is a sharp increase in the load.